William, Heather Pedrowitz. I'm the Southampton Town Administrator, and we're in front of the Southampton Fire Department. We're here today to interview John Workman, our new fire chief. I'm John Workman. Um, I come from Belchertown, uh, where I've done 25 years in the fire service for Belchertown Fire Department, uh, second in command. Um, and I'm happy to be here in Southampton. Southampton's a uh, great community. A nice opportunity for me to come in um, and make a difference in a community. I feel like I've got a lot to offer. It's a similar community uh, as to where I came from. Um, they're going through a lot of the same growing pains. Um, and I uh, very much enjoy a small community and, uh, and, and look forward to working here in Southampton to uh, bring about good service um, to the town, both in fire response and with our ambulance. Can you tell us a little bit about what this workforce and this fire station actually comprised of? Sure. Um, as with many small towns, um, we're no exception. Um, we have about 28 members, uh, including myself. Um, so we just have one full-time chief. Um, past that, the other 27 members are call force. Um, what that means is that um, they're not full-time. Uh, call force does not get any benefits of any sort. They don't get health care, they don't get overtime, um, they don't get vacation time. Um, the, the good thing about that call force is that we have a lot of experienced guys from other departments that are coming to work for us here in Southampton. Um, and as we have gone into uh, the advanced level ambulance care, um, we've gotten a lot of experience from other departments that have been able to come in. Um, it doesn't make sense for us to really be full-time department right now. Um, with the ambulance we have a staffing that is from 8 till 5, 7 days a week. Um, and no, no one firefighter puts in more than 20 hours just to be under that, uh, that threshold of a full-time firefighter. Everything else is uh, call firefighters that are at home. So when a call comes in to dispatch, they tone it out via our radios um, and uh, the firefighters respond from home to the station or to the scene, depending on the call. So what is this department responsible for? What are the functions of this department? Um, well, it's a, of course it's emergency response. Um, our, a, a lot of what we do is, is probably, you know, just in our ambulance service. A predominant amount of our calls are, are ambulance calls. Um, so it's a, a EMT paramedic response that we're going out with uh, two ambulances that we have, uh, one frontline and one backup ambulance. Um, we respond to, of course, any fire calls that come through, any reports of fire. Um, we respond to any explosions. Um, we respond to any uh, you know, bomb threats any uh, hazardous material incidents, so if there's an environmental concern somewhere with a spill or leak, uh, we would be uh, first due in to assess that uh, and mitigate whatever might be the problem. Um, so, you know, alarm soundings, carbon monoxide calls, jaws of life calls for car accidents. Um, we really do just about everything um, that the town is looking for when they are in distress. Um, you know, not police action, but fire action. And it's not just fire, it really encompasses a whole myriad of, of different things that we can provide. Now, does the fire department also issue day-to-day -day permits for its residents? Yeah, good point. Certainly a lot of what we do and why the, the chief is full-time is because um, just, of course, a lot of it is management, organization of, of 27 part-time guys. Um, keeping them up on all their training, um, doing all the documentation to make sure that they are um, have training provided to them um, and that they're uh, up to uh, standard in regards to uh, training requirements. Um, when we've got a good, great group that really does a good job, a lot of the training comes from in-house um, guys that are working for um, uh, EMT training outfits uh, that are paid for, um, basically. So, so we have one one gentleman who works for an online service that you can get certification online. But he's a, a teacher and writes all the programs for that. Well, he also works here in Southampton. Mm -hmm. So we utilize people like that to give in-house training. 
Um, we also have people that are part of the state hazmat teams um, that will also provide us the hazmat training that we need. Um, so it's, uh, it's really a diversified group um, that, uh, and a lot of my job is to make sure that they have adequate training and are staying up to standard. Um, also, uh, for paperwork, um, it, for me, a lot of like is like oil burner installations, uh, propane tanks underground, above ground propane tanks, um, gas stations, um, just uh, new construction for building just to uh, ensure that they're building to uh, new fire standards and safe fire standards. Uh, any commercial uh, commercial project, uh, I would just need to be on top of what the codes are and requirement for the for any projects that are going on, um, and making sure that they're they're you know building to those standards. Um, so I do a lot of plan review, um, do a lot of inspection, um, and just do a lot of management for the guys here. Now, does this department also issue fire burning permits? Uh, yep, and. Uh, Honestly, that's something that the, uh, the firefighters tend to do more than myself, um, where they, uh, they give their time to come in and issue burning permits for when burning season is open, which is open from January 15th till May 1st. And how do residents obtain these permits? Um, they come here to the station. Um, we are, in the past, we've always had Saturday hours where they've come down between 8 and 10 um, and gotten a permit from the firefighters who were on duty that day. Um, the DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, has control over uh, burning in any town um, and they have limited us to, they only want us to burn when there's our windy days because their concern is for uh, air pollution. Unfortunately, windy days are the worst for fire spread um, and that in hand will limit how many how much the uh, town's folks can come and get a permit. So one thing that we're considering doing is opening up so you can get a burning permit seven days a week, whenever we have it, because you know, we have people here in the station uh, from eight to five, so it would be from eight to 10, seven days a week is probably what we'll do next year, so that more citizens will have the opportunity to obtain a burning permit. Now earlier today, you had mentioned that our ambulance services are ALS. Have they always been ALS, and what does ALS mean? Yeah, um, no, they haven't always been ALS. Uh, when I came in back in October, uh, the department had just gone uh, ALS, Advanced Level Service. Um, what that means is uh, the, the firefighter EMTs that are on the ambulance are not just basic EMTs. They're actually uh, the highest tier that you can get, which is a paramedic. Um, paramedic is um, the best hospital care, pre-hospital care that you can get um, is to be a paramedic level. You can give uh, intravenous, um, just you can, uh, there's drugs that you can give to someone. Um, there's really a whole lot more life-saving life uh, uh, things that we can do to help someone who's in distress from a medical emergency. And so Southampton um, went to ALS service in October. Um, we have a paramedic on our ambulance. Uh, each time the ambulance goes out as best as we can staff. Um, and so with that, uh, we are providing ALS service to Southampton 24-7. Um, to do this, we had to go into an agreement with the state. Uh, basically, they wanted us to be full-time staff like we are uh, during the day, eight to five, seven days a week. So we're meeting that staffing requirement now. Um, the next fiscal year, in July of next year, we're going to have to add an additional shift on as part of our agreement with the state. So we'll have uh, two firefighters who are here at the station ready to be on an ambulance at an ALS level um, from 8 until probably 11 at night. And then from 11 till 6, it'll be the on-call firefighters that we have now. So are there any other benefits to having an ALS level ambulance service other than simply medical advantages for our residents? Well, I think that the big thing is the, the medical advantage for the, for the residents. Um, you know, having an advanced level uh, ambulance service in your town means that um, you don't lose, you know, five, ten minutes 
waiting for an ambulance uh, that can get, give you better care before you get to the hospital, um, you can offer that right here from Southampton, um, right from our station. So uh, in your first, when you uh, have an accident of any sort, any kind of medical emergency, um, it's really that first hour which is critical to how well you're going to do the rest of the time. So the better care that you can get as soon as possible, you have your best chance of, of surviving in the best possible manner afterwards. So having the advanced level care here in Southampton is a huge benefit to the town, uh, to the town's people. Um, an example would be a heart attack. I mean, you need to get uh, medicines into that person right away. If you delay by five minutes waiting for an ambulance from another town, um, it will make a huge difference in your quality of life for years to come after that. So um, the town of Southampton is very lucky and fortunate to have a lot of good firefighters that have dedicated themselves to, to bring advanced level care to get that training to staff these ambulances um, and to, to offer it to the town, the advanced level care. In prior years when Southampton did not have ALS paramedic level care for our ambulance service, how did the town get assistance from paramedics? Um, well, we would uh, staff our ambulance with the basic uh, EMTs that we had um, that would get you to the scene and basically you could give oxygen and transport someone. Um, Oftentimes people require more than that before getting to the hospital and so as you were on scene and identified that need, you would then put a call in uh, to dispatch who would get a ambulance from a surrounding community that would either come to the scene where you were or meet you prior to your arrival at the hospital um, just to because that's so important to get that extra level of care prior to getting to the hospital and there was a delay. Other than the delay, was there other costs that were associated with having outside paramedic assistance for the town? Well, financially uh, speaking. Yeah, I think when you start start talking financially, uh, a couple things happen. Uh, one is for an ambulance. I mean, you charge for your ambulance service. The insurance companies pay out for that service. So there's a source of revenue which helps offset the costs of running the ambulance. Um, when you start to get outside departments to come in with their ambulance, you then have to pay them. So not only do you not get to bill for the ambulance service that you are sending out, but you also have to pay for the ambulance service that you are bringing in to help. So uh, you, you lose money both sides of that when you bring in an ambulance from another, another department. So by having the ALS paramedic ambulance service in Southampton, it's actually also a, in addition to being a medical benefit for our residents, there's also a financial benefit for the town as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think that's one major factor why the town supported it so wholeheartedly, because it really, it offers a, a much better level of care to the residents, and it helps uh, with, with the fact that you can bill an insurance company um, it helps to offset the cost of what it, the cost burden to the town. So yes, it helps both ways. Well, we're on the topic of finances, John. In the upcoming year, we're looking at a balanced FY15 budget, which has a few, several reductions in it, and some are more severe for certain departments than others, just the way the dice will roll. In this case, for your department, what will these, what will these reductions, how will they impact your department? Yeah, like I say, I just came in in October, and as I came in, one of the things that I really tried to focus on is where were the shortcomings for the department. So I spent a lot of time, uh, a number of months when I first came in, to really assess the department, the department's needs. Um, uh, there's, you know, many areas um, within the uh, firehouse itself um, that just uh, need attention. My first day on the job, uh, the three fire engines that we had, uh, none of them would pass a pump test. So, um, you know, so, so the first bit of it was really just, you know, getting some of that uh, equipment up and running. Um, the problem is there's not much money in the budget prior. I don't really think there's, you know, there wasn't, uh, our, our budget was really at a, at a very low level as compared to what we needed to have this department function correctly. 
So when I spent the time with the new budget, I really tried to assess um, how I could put trucks on schedules, how I could look at the gear and try and figure out ways to uh, get better equipment, get, get adequate gear um, in a way that would not uh, hugely impact the town financially. Um, when I proposed that budget, the finance committee looked at it and it was a great budget. They had a lot of, you know, they said they ad admired how much work um, I put into it. Um, unfortunately, as we've all found out, that uh, going to the town, the town doesn't have much money. Um, so without an override, they cannot fund that budget, no matter how worthy it is. Um, the budget that they uh, can fund and have agreed to fund is the budget where it was before. Um, the problem with the budget where it was before is that trucks are still not getting fixed. Um, we can keep the trucks red, but we can't keep them functioning. Um, there's been a lot of repairs that have been put off. Um, we've got hose that should have been replaced has not been replaced. We have the, uh, the turnout gear that the firefighters need to wear to em enter a dangerous environment. Um, is supposed to be uh, less than 10 years old. Um, we only have you know, five sets of gear in the whole department, which is less than 10 years old. Um, so there's just a number of things that with the current budget, we are not able to fix. Um, and it, we are literally just getting by with bare minimum um, and we don't pay a lot for staffing. You know, our staffing doesn't get any benefits of any sort. Um, and so the current budget just gets us by. Um, but it raises concerns um, for what will happen in years to come. Um, one of the problems also is if we are level funded this year, uh, next year our agreement with the state is that we have to put on another shift of firefighter medics. Um, that's probably going to add, you know, 150 to 200 thousand dollars to a budget. That there's no room for that in our current budget. I I I I, I don't know how we would do it next year um, if we didn't if we couldn't provide that staffing. We would lose our advanced level care license. So um, you know, this year we're just getting by. Um, Next year, I think we would lose our license if it continued. Um, with the override, um, it allows us to uh, put some uh, time and effort and money into the trucks, which are sorely need some repairs that have been put off for years. Um, it allows us to look at some hose, and we can't buy everything all at once. The budget, as I said, I spent a lot of time with, but it was to make small steps to get us in the right direction. So the new budget will get us in, in, in the right direction, but only small steps. Um, you know, for instance, you know, I think of like the, the firefighters, if they uh, go to a medical emergency and get blood on their clothing, um, right now they buy their own clothing. There's been no money ever in the budget to, to purchase any kind of uniforms or laundry service for them at all. Um, so one of the small things, um, is clothing for firefighters and it doesn't seem like a really big deal just in, a, in its own but for the firefighters who are you know getting up from their tables in the middle of the night uh, or from a dinner table or getting out of bed um, they have to buy their own clothes and if they get soiled they're taking care of it themselves so although it seems a small thing it's a big thing to keep uh, staff happy uh, this this truck here although it's a 2005 um, and looks shiny uh, the foam system doesn't work and we've been we've been putting out fire for a hundred years with just water foam allows us to put out more fire um, with less water and the foam system on this truck doesn't function at all so uh, with the override uh, it'll allow us to, to invest some money uh, back into our equipment the wonderful thing about a small town is that most of the guys are right here from town um, any of them that are from out of town are dedicated firefighters that really want, they're doing firefighting in their spare time. So it's almost like its own breed of person who comes in um, to do a job to help people because you just enjoy helping people. So um, as chief, I feel it's my job to support them. The override budget will help me to do that. 
and not in a dramatic way, but in ways that will progressively get better over time.